Hello and welcome back to the Dimmer Helen channel. These videos are about creating music and just getting in there with the creation and not focusing on all of the extras that come with it, like EQ, compression, etc. So this is really video three of the series because video two didn't record any of the audio, which typically is pretty vital to a music tutorial series. So we're going to walk through what I have changed and the sounds that I've made. And I'm also going to show you the sounds and the chords that we made as well. So first, let's concentrate on the bass. The original bass didn't sound melodic techno or it wasn't close enough for comfort. A few of you were mentioning that it sounds more like house or garage and things like that. So I thought let's sway it away and just give it a little bit more of a melodic techno feel. So the bass was the first thing to change. Which now has this. And I just made this patch here from scratch using a saw and a pulse and you can see them there. So if you want to copy the settings, everything you can see on there is what the preset is. As for the red here, that is for the distortion. And again, you can pause the video here to obviously copy the settings there as well. But the main takeaway for this is we've created a bit more of a solid bass. So now when we sort of play that all as one, You can see that we've got a much more cohesive bass. Uh, there's things to be done to that bass still, but we're just in the creation phase. I'm not really too fussy about that, but there's going to be an extra layer that's going to sort of expand the mids of the bass. The other part, I've put all the percussion into a folder so we can see everything, and I've just kind of built it up into sort of a structure. You can see I've started structuring out the track a little bit there. So in terms of the structure, you didn't really miss too much. It's mainly sort of the leads and the pads that we created here. So let's take a look at so let's take a look at the leads here. We have this melodic sequence. So really the takeaway here is it is in C major. I've made a four note chord structure with a bass in the bottom. So we have the C, F and A in the bass and to keep it flowing naturally, we just shifted these notes here backwards. So usually it would have looked something like that, where that would have continued into the next bar. And then again here, where the D has risen up before the bar, that would have been also the previous chord. So I've just kind of flowed them in. So instead of it all looking sort of linear like this, you'll hear how it sounds. It sounds nice, but it, it just sounded like it needs to come in a little bit earlier and just flow a little bit smoother. So you can see if I just undo what I'm doing here, I'm preempting the next chord on the half beat. So in between on the off beat before the bar starts. And that transcends into the pads. And that was just a copy of the leads. And then all I've done is just lengthen them out and sustain them. And then the same for the bass. I've just done this with the bass to create a nice pad bass. And you can see it rises up to an A here, whereas if you notice everywhere else, it falls down to the A below. And A0 was a little bit too low. I think it is here as well. Uh, if we solo this, I think it might be just a little bit too low. Oh, it's not too bad. So on the pad base, it falls to bits. Just sounded a bit smoother and you'll you'll hear that it sounds nice and all i'm doing is filtering that in just using a little bit of automation and that is using the modulation wheel so if we just take a look there you can see on the mod we've got the filter cutoff position moving so from here to full so it's open and then on here what we've we got filter resonance i'm just reducing the resonance as it's opening I think the same goes for the pads. Let's just check. Yep, yeah, we've got a bit of an automation rise on the frequency. We're just using Pro-Q3 for that in the audio inserts. So you can use a free one like, say, TDR Nova. You can just use that. And all I'm doing is moving this low pass here up and down so it filters it in and out. And then the pad base, nothing. So in terms of pad design, this is from my pack. So you won't be able to recreate this unless you have, I think this wavetable is actually from one of the download packs. 
not entirely sure. You can have a look, Acid Rock Feats Manix, you can have a look at that. But we took this as Ethereal, and if we just search quickly, because I've done so many packs recently, yeah, it's from Vital Trans Volume 1, so I'll put a link in the description for that pack if you want to go and grab that on the website. And what this is doing is just providing a nice sort of non-standard pad. It's just got something, it's a little bit more organic. It sounds really nice as it's opening up it's not too bright not too muddy it's just got a nice texture to it and it's the perfect first layer for the pads the pad base was made from scratch and if we just have a look here see singular waveform here seven voices down to four unison take a look at the advanced tab i've just reduced the stereo unison so it becomes a little bit more mono so the stereo field isn't as wide and let's just demonstrate that here to the sides or down the middle so I wanted somewhere in between so we still had a bit of stereo in there but at the same time still kind of keeping it in the middle uh, and we use the center drop stack as well so if we just quickly look at the voices we've got seven voices so the first one's going to be at the pitch we've set which is zero so the the original octave it's played at then the second voice of those seven is going to be one octave below and then the next one's going to be the current octave and then the next one's going to be one octave down and you can see that's what the center drop is doing there and then with that i think on the effects we've just got some distortion just to really give it some power uh, straight out of the box and that then sits underneath everything else just needed something there. I'm going to say that's a little bit too loud. So you can see there we have a nice transition we've just got the basics we're not trying to make it sound perfect we have just got the nice transition straight in and if you can start making your tracks sound like this from not doing any processing or doing very minimal processing like let's just take a look at the bass for example on audio inserts we've got a side chain got some gain just to bring the gain level up and then just a nice roll off on the bass there so really nothing happening at all apart from side chain and a little bit of low end control or high end control so now that we're up to speed hopefully that's answered all of the questions i don't think there's anything else that i had in there that i needed to put in this video but with that in mind we can now start expanding so just going to remove that there and I'm going to start fleshing out the rest of the track. So you can use track markers and things like that to sort of get the areas marked out. You can use a reference track and copy how that moves. Um, but I'm just doing this by sort of like ear just off the top of my head. But for now, let's use a marker track. and Just add that in. So you can see there's a one here. So if I move this across. And then bar 33 is going to be kind of the main drop for the bass. So we've got a lot of uh, sort of stuff to put in there to introduce the bass into what we hear at this point where it is uh, looped. And then I'm going to put that there, that there, and that there. And then what we can do in this marker section, once the track is selected, if we click edit, we can actually rename these on the description. So let's just copy that across. So let's have 16 bars of that. Okay, so we've got a couple of generic loops in there still. Let's just have a listen to them. All right, so if we zoom that in, let's chop it out of there, then we can unmute it. some key markers in here of 
like where transitions or mini transitions or things are going to come in and out. Dropping the kick here. So this one's very generic. Um, it's just straight out of that dead mouse pack. So we need to work out a way of changing that up. So we'll sort that out after, but we've got the main element there. So let's close that down. I just want to remove some of the main sort of low mids as a, we should speak on this melody. So something like that, just, just to neaten up that low end a little bit, because we're going to let the bass do the rest. control it now get in the ballpark area where I think it should be sounding. So I suppose we could have the pads in at this point here. That. Okay so we're going to need to add some side chain in here. So let's go back to using Tal Filter 2. going to do some read write automate and just click right on cubase and then just click the parameter you don't have to move it or anything and it'll add a lane in and you can see now we've got that depth parameter so let's get rid of that let's add a bit of side chain drop that So we have a nice sound and let's move that across. So we can do something with the lead now just to kind of signify another little bit of a drop there, I think. Okay, so we seem to have our towel filter turned off here. Let's just see why that is. If we click on here, we can then just make this automate a little bit. Let's make a two stage, or maybe three stage automation, just so we can really customize this down. Get the curve in like that. And maybe so it doesn't actually even reach the top, it's gonna sink back down like so. Just get rid of that and curve that down. Gonna change up how this lead moves we have let's just put it here so we can hear what's going on just hits a bit too hard when it's filtered in so i'm gonna make a pluck out of it but make it curved like this and we can control how much of it, how powerful it is to this just dropping off a little bit you can see here
right, so we've got a very nice sort of starting point there. We've got this kind of a drop and then we've got it building up and then we're going to have the sort of main break here, I think, and then the main drop and then kind of back to the end. So what we can do here is we can say that marker there is going to go there. So another break and then we'll drag this across and let's just say we're going to have that much space till the drop. What we can do is just copy some of these parameters over like so. And we can copy drop one like this. Let's just get rid of that one. So we've got an idea of where the drop's going to be and we can just remove the leads, for example. So five, six. So this then if we click on this track, we can rename these and that is going to be number six is going to be break two. Number nine, I don't even think we need number nine there for now. So let's just get rid of that one. And then instead of drop two, we'll have main drop. So it's kind of after the main break because it's a lot longer in terms of a break here, like a mini break slash bridge, even though it's a bit too long for a bridge. OK, so to signify that's coming, we can just zoom out here and let's just drop the kick there. Let's have one last kick on that bit. So then that goes. <laughs> Okay, so let's close those up. So you can see the track structure is starting to form now and we can start adding some vocals maybe into this or something, something that sounds quite nice. Probably have a look on Splice. So if you want to grab the same vocal, you'll, you'll have to go to the same place that I'm going to get that from. But for now, that is sounding pretty good. Okay, so we've got quite a lot done in here. Obviously, I've had to recover episode number two, which is, this is episode number two, but just had to recover what I'd done and lost but we've got sort of a generic a but we've got a sort of generic layout already sorted so join me in the next video where we're going to be taking a look at expanding this even further I think what we'll start doing is just adding a few effects in get the final bit of the layout sorted and think of a way of making this sort of bit unique so if you have any suggestions obviously let me know in the comments I'll take any suggestions if they kind of suit the style and my style and everything else. So if they do, they'll get put into the video. So thank you very much for watching. If you do enjoy the videos, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on these tutorial series. And there's many other videos that also are to come. So thank you very much for watching. See you all in the next one.